Yo, what's good everyone? It's me, it's Conchinsula. I hope you're having a good day. Welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about unfair advantages in Pokemon Go. This has been a constant struggle for every single Pokemon Go player because the way the game is currently designed, depending on where you live and how many players are active around you, you're going to have a much different experience compared to other players. There are many ways you can have an unfair advantage in Pokemon Go, and I wanted to talk about them here. Now real quick, if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and you're going to get more content just like this one. So with that said, let's dive into the unfair advantages in Pokemon Go. Let's start this off with something a little bit obvious. If you live in an urban area, you're going to have a much better Pokemon Go experience compared to living in a rural area. Why do I say that? Well, if you live in an urban area, typically there's going to be a lot more points of interest around you, which means you're going to see a lot more Pokestops and gyms. In my local areas, this is very apparent if you go to downtown Chicago, but if you go outside of downtown Chicago into the suburbs or even further out into rural areas, you're going to see a fraction of the amount of Pokestops and gyms. So when it comes to getting Pokeballs as well as different items that you need in order to progress in Pokemon Go, you're going to get a plethora of that if you live in a city area as opposed to a rural area. This has been a constant struggle when it comes to Pokemon Go because when it comes to those who live in rural areas, they often run out of Pokeballs or they just simply do not have enough experience in Pokemon around them and that is simply because there is not enough gyms and Pokestops. But there is one way you can have an unfair advantage even if you do not live in a big city and that is to get yourself a home gym. Some players in the world are extremely lucky for having a gym on top of their house. So for all of those days where you're not able to go out and play, you're gonna be completely fine because there's going to be a gym right on top of your house. Now, ever since they increased the distance for interacting with different Pokestops and gyms, some players may have found that now they have access to a home gym. And with access to a home gym, you're gonna be able to do a whole bunch of raids. You're gonna be able to get your Poke Coins every day by holding onto that gym. And most important of all, you're always going to have full stock of Pokeballs, potions, and different items that you need. And also typically around every single gym there is a lot of different Pokemon spawns so it's going to be easy for you to constantly get a steady stream of Stardust and experience especially if you live on top of a home gym. But next let's move on to an unfair advantage that most players get to enjoy and typically these advantages come with living in a high population area and that is having an active community versus having no community at all. There are some players out there who live in big cities but they have absolutely no community around them. Why is having a community important? Well, if you want to do a whole bunch of raids or if you want to get the best of the best Pokemon, the best way for you to do that is to join a community. For some players, they are very active within their own local communities and they have full access to getting 100% IV callouts or having a whole bunch of raiders with within a raid group. So it's very easy for them to have filled raid groups whenever they do local raids or they have a whole bunch of the best of the best Pokemon in their collection and it really comes down to having an active community. But for most players, especially those who live in rural areas, it might be very difficult to enjoy a lot of the fundamentals of Pokemon Go and that is simply because they do not have a community of players that they can play with. Now speaking of community, there is another advantage that most players enjoy and that is having a complete friends list of active players as opposed to having no friends in your friends list at all. Yeah, having a good friends list is very important in Pokemon Go because when it comes to this game, there are a lot of advantages to having a robust friends list. First and foremost, you get gifts from those friends, so even if you do not have any Pokestops around you, you could still stock up on a lot of basic items like Pokeballs and Potions. And then on top of that, having a whole bunch of friends on your friends list allows you to get lucky trades as well as best friend bonuses, so you could get a lot of experience. Having a filled up friends list 
course is extremely important, but a lot of players tend to neglect it. So I really do think that if you do not have a whole bunch of friends, then you need to get on that because having a lot of active friends is a huge advantage in Pokemon Go. And then finally, the biggest unfair advantage that players have is of course, by spending a lot of money. Now, there are a lot of things in Pokemon Go that open up to you when you have a lot of money in the bank. Like if you're able to spend Pokecoins on the whim, then you're gonna be able to have a whole bunch of raid passes. You're also going to have access to a lot of special events, and then you'll be able to purchase all of those special research tickets, which are going to award you with mythical Pokemon and rare Pokemon, as well as premium items. So there's a lot of things in Pokemon Go that require you to spend money, and it's really unfortunate because when it comes to monetization, Niantic has kind of had this problem where they tend to undervalue a lot of different items, and a lot of players are well aware of that. So the more you end up spending, the more you're gonna end up getting out of this game. I mean, for myself, for the past two to three years, I've essentially gone completely free to play. I am a bit of a low spender, if anything. My experience is definitely different compared to when I was a heavy spender. I'm doing way less raids than I used to. I'm hatching way less eggs and I'm not getting as many good Pokemon compared to before. And I'm talking about super rare Pokemon, very meta relevant Pokemon, as well as 100% IVs. Most of those you get from doing a whole bunch of raids and egg hatches, but as of late, I haven't been getting most of those at all because I just haven't been spending any money. So yeah, if you're a big spender, you're definitely going to have a lot more access to this game. You're gonna get a lot more Pokemon that are going to be really good for raid battles and PvP. And if you're a low spender, you're gonna have a much more difficult time. And that's just the nature of this game. It's definitely designed for those who want to spend money. So yeah, these are five huge advantages that I've seen a lot of players utilize when it comes to Pokemon Go, but it doesn't stop there. There's obviously a lot more different advantages. One of the big ones that I should have mentioned is of course mobility. Like if you do not have access to a car, you're not going to be able to travel to a lot of special areas for community days, go fest, different things like that. And then of course, if you are disabled and you just simply cannot go out and explore, you're pretty much going to be out of luck. There's going to be a lot of stuff within Pokemon Go that you're just simply not going to have access to. I obviously do not like the fact that this game is not as accessible, but it's kind of the nature of the game. Unfortunately, it is a exploration based game and that is how Niantic designed it. So I really hope they add a lot more elements that will alleviate a lot of these advantages. I think one of the big ways they could have done that is by unnerfing remote raids. Remote raiding was essentially the be all fix for a lot of these accessibility issues, but Niantic decided to nerf remote raiding and because of that, a lot of these issues have now persisted to this day. So I really hope Niantic understands that some of the things that they do makes the game very difficult for a lot of players out there. But yeah, in any case, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know your thoughts regarding everything that I talked about down below. What is one unfair advantage that you've noticed when it comes to Pokemon Go? What is something that you wish you had that other players do have? Make sure you mention all that stuff in the comments and let's have a great discussion. And as always, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you ended up enjoying this video and found it to be informative and insightful, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And also don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. And I want to give a quick shout out to all the patrons on my Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support the Conscience Low channel, the obvious best way to do so is by becoming a paid Patreon member. And if you become a paid Patreon member, you get a permanent spot on my in-game Pokemon Go friends list. Which means for remote raiding and the friendship levels, if you want to interact with me, then make sure you go and check out my Patreon. And if you want to support my channel in a very different way, you can do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Count Chinsula, and I'm on the platforms that you see right here, right here. So make sure you go over there and give me a follow. All right, and that's going to be it for this video. I'm Count Chinsula. be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.